Hello and welcome to the lecture of mechanical vibration. Today we are going to talk about single degree of freedom, free vibration. Here I am saying that single degree of freedom that means uh, for a system which I am going to talk about has only one degree of freedom and I am interested to understand and write the equation of motion of the vibratory motion of this single degree of freedom system. So before we go and uh, derive the mathematical expression, let me explain you this single degree of motion and for that I have taken three examples. I will start with the middle one where I am saying that there is a spring and the spring is connected with one mass m. Suppose this is a uh, pl plane system means I am talking about the two dimensional space. So that in that case the mass has scope to move only in the horizontal forward and backward direction. So in this case if I will give certain displacement to this mass the mass will be able to oscillate only in the horizontal direction that means the degree of freedom for this system is only one and that is the motion along the x direction. So one parameter which is independent parameter or available parameter for the motion of this body is the motion along the x and this has the one degree of freedom. Now let's start the second case where I am explaining one where I am showing one pendulum and here also I am considering two dimensional space and I want to understand the degree of freedom of this system. So let's try to understand that this is my pendulum. I am giving certain initial force to this pendulum or certain displacement so finally what will happen let's I am giving some initial displacement so that the pendulum reaches here after that I am releasing my pendulum when I will release the pendulum it will give an oscillatory motion in this way for an instant of time suppose my pendulum bob this mass m is somewhere here so now if I will compare that what happens to this body I will see that initially suppose my body is at point 1 and now it has reached to point 2. If I will see the motion of the body I can see that there is a x motion as well as there is a y motion. So in that way if there are two motion whether I should say there are two degree of freedom but the system is only one degree of freedom why because these x and y are not independent and why so because if I will see I can also define the third uh, variable which is theta instead of saying that the x is the independent motion or y is the independent motion I can also say that theta is also another independent motion are these three are independent to each other or if I will calculate the theta and I know the L value I will get the position of the bob yes if you know the theta and you know the L which is given to you you will be able to get x and y in the similar way if I will get the x value and I know the length I will be able to get the y and theta value how you can get it if this is my initial condition this is my final condition I know the L value so if I will make this theta I know that what would be the length of this part and this this is L so this this is theta so this will be L cos theta and this is L sin theta so my x motion will be L sin theta and my y motion will be L minus L cos theta. In that way if I know the theta I can write the x and y in terms of theta that means x and y are not independent they are function of theta. Similar, similar way these three variables are not independent to each other they are interconnected if I know one variable I will be able to get other two variables that means this system has only one independent motion or one degree of freedom. The third case I am showing is there is a bar and there is a disk connected at the center of the bar. In this case I can define different degree of freedom. For example if I will give a force to this disk in this direction and I will release the disk I will find that, that there is a oscillatory motion of this disk along this axis. This is one independent degree of freedom. If I will give force in this direction there will be a bending of this bar and if I will release the force this disc will oscillate in this direction. In third way if I will give a certain rotation to this bar and I will remove I will find that there is a torsional oscillation of this disc. In that way I can define one motion along x, one motion along y and one rotation along z but 
I am considering that one time of period, one at one time at one time there is only one motion exists in the system. That means if I am giving this motion, I am assuming that there will not be any vertical motion or torsional motion. In that way, the system will have one degree of freedom. If I am considering that system may exhibit different motions simultaneously, that time I will say that the system will have three degree of freedom or it is actually a continuous system so the degree of freedom will be infinite but at this point it is not in our scope we are mainly focusing a single degree of freedom system so you can you assume that these bars are just acting as a spring in that way there may be three different degree of freedom but here we are going to talk about the degree of freedom uh, single degree motion vibration of a single degree of freedom system so let me explain you that if i want to initiate free vibration how i can initiate free vibration so here i am showing one system where i am having a spring and a mass so here i am writing that what are the elementary part of a vibratory system which system will vibrate and which system will not vibrate how you can decide suppose i am having a rigid box mount uh, placed on a rigid ground do you think that this system will vibrate if i will apply certain force to this body and i will remove the force do you think that there will be certain vibration i don't think so because i am initially i said that this the block is rigid as well as the ground is rigid that means the stiffness is infinite or my flexibility is zero so as the flexibility is zero it will not vibrate what does it mean it says that the flexibility is one of the important important component required for the motion on the other hand i am saying that there is a string and there is no mass the string is massless suppose i will give certain motion to this body it it will not exhibit any oscillatory motion unless i will put one mass here when i will put a mass here and i will give certain oscillation movement there will be oscillation and this oscillation says that this mass causes the kinetic energy and the because of the motion of the mass it has some potential energy also and there is a continuous exchange of or conversion of kinetic energy into potential energy and from potential energy to the kinetic energy that means a vibratory system has certain mechanism so that we have this facility so that we can convert the kinetic energy into potential energy and from potential to kinetic energy so this is a system where we are having one element which is responsible for the stiffness or the flexibility of the system another member which is responsible for the inertial Uh, force in the system and what happens when i will apply certain force to this mass it will gain some kinetic energy that kinetic energy will ultimately convert into the potential energy of the spring and in that way there will be continuous exchange of the kinetic and the potential energy and the motion of the system will be an oscillatory motion so i can define that for vibratory system the elementary components are two one is the inertial component another one a component or an element which is responsible for restoring force in case of a spring mass system my restoring force come because of the spring on the other hand if i will talk the motion of a pendulum in case of a pendulum mass is responsible for the initial part but for the restoring force gravitational gravity is responsible for the restoring force now so now i will go and i will define my free vibration suppose this is my system initially the mass is here and there is no extension in the spring if i will give an initial deflection of value x not and then i will release my system after releasing my system initially it was here so now when i will release the system it will have an oscillatory motion about this position so i will define that this is my mean position and mass is oscillating about this mean position if i am interested to write the equation of motion of this system so was first there are I, let me tell you that there are different approaches one approach is based on the newton's law where we talk about the forces and then we write the equation of motion of this system the newton's approach is also defined as d lambert method then the second approach is the energy approach so in this session we are going to see both the approaches to write the equation of motion of the system i will start with the newton's approach 
So here I am showing that suppose this is the free body diagram of mass for any instant of time t. What is happening here? The system is oscillating about its mean position and I am considering my system when it has already moved a distance x from the mean position and still it is moving in this direction it is not the extreme condition please understand this is not the extreme position the mass is moving continuously in this direction suppose the, this is the extreme condition so I am taking or I am considering mass my mass at an instant of time t where it has already moved a distance x from the mean position and my time started when the mass at the mean position here t is equal to 0 when it is it has reached here my time is t now now if I will make the free body diagram of mass at this point I will observe that it is moving in this direction so it will have an acceleration x double dot in this direction at the same time there is certain expansion of the spring that means there will be spring force which is acting toward this direction and opposite to the direction of the acceleration and now if I am writing the DL Lambert law my DL Lambert law says that total summation of forces will be going to balance by mass into acceleration but at this stage there is a uh, rule which says that when you are going to sum the forces the, which force will be positive and which force will be negative so my rule is that whatever forces which are in the direction of the acceleration will considered as positive so here there is only one force and the direction of acceleration is towards right but the force is acting towards left that means when I will write this equation I will say that mx double dot is going to be balanced by minus kx because the direction of the force is opposite to the direction of the acceleration. If you are more interested you can see my other video where we have, where we ha I have explained the D. Lambert law. So finally this is my equation and this is a second order ordinary differential equation and this is the equation of motion for this system. Now suppose I am I am interested to use the energy approach and to get the equation of motion of this system so what I can do from one energy approach says that the total energy of system will conserve that at any instant of time the total energy will be a constant quantity and what are the total energy what is the total energy there are two types of energy in my system one is the kinetic energy another one is the potential energy so suppose the same case at time t my mass is here and I am assuming that it has this displacement x velocity x dot and acceleration x double dot now what would be the kinetic energy my kinetic energy will be half m x dot square at the same time as I said that the displacement is x there will be potential energy stored in the spring and the potential energy will be half k x square if I will write the total energy that is a constant quantity with respect to time my total energy will be summation of these two quantity but if this is a constant quantity with respect to time if I will differentiate my total energy with respect to time it will be zero so this is the philosophy so first I will write the expression for the total energy so this is my total energy now if I will differentiate this with respect to time I will get that half m x dot square will be differentiated and it will get 2x dot x double dot similarly when I will differentiate half kx square I will get 2x and the x dot and my constant quantity will become 0 when I will see that this half will go as well as 2 will go x dot will also go so finally I am having mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0 so this is the governing equation of motion of my system now so far we have assumed that we have considered a system of spring and a mass we have given initial deflection to the mass and then we have released that means this is your free vibration using the d Lambert principle as well as the energy approach I have derived the equation of motion of this system now I am interested to find that what sort of motion it is because we know that this is a simple, this is a vibratory motion but suppose we want to confirm that this is what sort of motion it is what I can do so to find what sort of motion it is I have to take help of mathematics in mathematics we know that there is a particular motion we define as the simple harmonic motion 
and that can be written with the help of these function this sine function or cos function so if i am i am interested to write a simple harmonic motion i can say that x will be x sin omega t where x is the function of time if i will plot this i will find that this sort of motion will have a repetition and if i am point um, making a plot between the time and the amplitude of the system i will find this sort of motion this is for the sine and this is for the cos so now i have seen that this is a simple harmonic motion at this point i am not saying that the motion which i have calculated for my system is a simple harmonic motion i only have this is my governing equation now i am taking help of mathematics to understand further the equation i have derived so this is my simple harmonic motion equation and if i will differentiate my simple harmonic expression i will get the velocity that will be x uh, and the omega cos omega t if i will further differentiate i will get the acceleration when i will see the first and the third equation i can correlate first and third equation in a way that the x double dot will be minus omega square x if i will rearrange them i will get this expression and this is very important expression generally asked in the interview or in the competitive exams here we define that if my motion is a simple harmonic motion which can be defined by this function in this case the ratio of the acceleration and the displacement will be a constant quantity so my definition one of, one of the definition of simple harmonic motion is that that any motion where the ratio of acceleration to displacement is constant is a simple harmonic motion when i will again rearrange i will get this expression so finally this is the expression i have received by taking a simple harmonic motion case so now when i will compare this equation with the equation i have developed so this is the equation i have developed for a spring mass system and this is the expression i have uh, developed using the mathematical principle that is for the simple harmonic motion so when i will compare these two equation i will observe that x double dot x double dot is here x is here x is here the only difference is here k and m so if i will take m here then balance these two equation i will get that omega square will be k by m so omega will be k by m and if i will go back and i will see my simple harmonic motion i know that what is the representation of this omega omega basically represent that the this if this is my time period t that will be 2 pi by omega so omega is the angular velocity angular frequency and if i am interested to find the frequency of oscillation i know that 2 pi f will be equal to omega where f is the frequency and omega is the angular frequency or i would say it is angular velocity so now we have seen that the motion which we derived for a simple single degree of freedom vibratory system is equivalent to a simple harmonic motion and using these two uh, uh, equations i will be able to get the frequency of oscillation of my system and that is equal to under root k by m so if you are having a spring of value 10 kilo newton per meter stiffness and you are having a mass of 2 kg and suppose you are giving an initial deflection to this mass so that this is freely vibrating you will be able to calculate the frequency of this system and that frequency basically known as the free vibration frequency or the natural frequency of your system so this omega is nothing but your natural frequency or free vibration frequency when i will take the 2 pi f i will get that the frequency in hertz will be 1 by 2 pi under root k by m or my time period will be 2 pi under root m by k in seconds so these are the expression i can get based on the philosophy of 